our next guest, we have the most experienced salsa couple in the UK, world level champion competitor, and uh, featured in many television shows and movies. Um, even more famous for their successful performance group, uh, professional and unique way of teaching. Um, Gil and Shelley, how are you guys? Welcome to Dance Spotlight. Thank you very much. We're, we're really well, thank you. Thank All you, yes. Yeah. We've been great. <laughs> Um, so are the family good with this uh, situation with the coronavirus? Luckily so far, thank you. Yeah, if everyone, Touchwood is, is healthy um, in our families. Yeah, in Mexico everybody is, is healthy now, so it's, it's a bit early time, but it's, everybody's doing well. Yeah. And he's doing well because we, we think he had it um, yeah. a little while ago and, and he's recovered after a tough time. So. Yeah, it was a bit difficult, but now yeah. I'm back to normal. So was it? Um, so you had the symptoms, is it, or what, what exactly happened? Yeah, I had completely the symptoms for some days. I had three or four really bad days, and and yeah, it was like twelve days. Yeah, in total. Or like twelve yeah. days in total, or fifteen days. But now I'm back to normal. I can do anything now. It feels great to be back. So for the interview, um, uh, there's a lot of information um, online. But um, we we basically want to find out more about you guys, pretty much the background story of um, uh, how how you started, because that's kind of um, you guys carry a lot of credentials, and um, I guess it's hard to see the people behind the um, uh, if you're not involved in your close group or part of your uh, community, um, it's it's hard to kind of see the, the the people behind the videos of you dancing and, and things like that. How did you start your path into into the dancing? Well, for me, um, with salsa, my, my mom and dad actually danced salsa before I did. They did a bit of ballroom and then some salsa in my teenage years. And um, at the time, I actually thought, well, that's not so cool, you know, a typical teenager. Um, but then when I was at university, my dad very generously took me on holiday with him to Cuba. And I loved it. I really caught the bug there. And then when I came back from that holiday, I was at university in Oxford, and there's a fantastic salsa scene there, still is, very friendly, very fun, very welcoming, and I started to go to classes there and just uh, really enjoyed it, and, and it was a great balance for me. I was, I'm, I was doing uh, scientific studies, and that was a really good balance, and, and, and it just caught me from there, and then from that moment on, I've, I've done both. Yeah, for me, I was in Mexico City, and then... I went to be, in Mexico. You learn from when you are a child. You are dancing already at home. <laughs> we play music. You hear salsa everywhere in Mexico. In the taxi shops, everywhere. And with the family, you learn from them when you are really, really young, like a child, to start moving and the rhythm. And so you get used to that. And then you start dancing the normal style in Mexico, which is like cumbia and Cuban. It's a mix of Cuban and cumbia, and everybody learns that. So, but then one day I went when I was almost thirty. I went to. Uh, Monterrey, the north of the country, to visit my cousin for his birthday. And then I went to this club, like kind of bar salsa. And uh, when I was there, I saw this guy dancing amazingly, amazingly. And I was like, wow, I want to dance like this guy. This guy, this guy was Adolfo in Dacochea. He started in Mexico, in, in, in Monterrey, in the, in the north of the country. Of course, it was completely new. And then when I saw him dancing this cross body list, I was like, wow. And I, I asked him for lessons, so I started like two weeks there when, while I was visiting my cousin. I did some private lessons with him, and he contacted me with teachers in Mexico City because I had to go back to Mexico City, and that's the way I started. So I, I, I just loved it from the beginning, watching Adolfo. Yeah. Um, so is it from that point on that you, you decided that this is your path, this is what you want to do going forward? I think so. At the beginning, it was, of course, fun and challenge because I'm, I'm extremely competitive on everything. If you're eating next to me, I think I'm checking who can eat faster. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, when I, when I saw this, like a bit of a challenge because it's not easy, we know, to, to, to do the right things properly. So I started loving it. And then I saw it like a competition for myself to start getting the best in the group, the best in the lesson, the best. Yeah, until I started even doing competitions amateur with the schools in Mexico after six months. So I, I love it. It's, it's, I think it was when I took really the passion for that in Mexico City from the beginning. For me, it wasn't so much about competition. It was just I, I just really enjoyed it. It's always been a fantastic compliment for me, body and mind. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what hooked me. Uh, could you give us one fact? that um, 
many of your followers wouldn't know about you. You want to start on me? Can you start? Okay, so for me, uh, one fact will be that because through sports, that I did a lot of sports in Mexico, I, I, I've been always, I love sports more than anything. That's why it was the dancing for me so important. Uh, I start coaching people in sports and then somehow coaching people through life to get positive, to get energy, to go through difficult times and things like this. And then this started evolving into motivational speaking. So I did some motivational talks in Mexico and for one-to-one -one and for groups, uh, sometimes for some companies, sometimes for uh, teenagers, sometimes for uh, teams, sport teams. So yeah, it's something that I haven't done here, but I've been preparing, it's, it's, it's funny because I've been preparing this the last year here to come back to start with this here in the UK. I did courses and I was almost ready to start with this and then this came now, but it's okay because I can keep preparing. And I think it's gonna be a second thing that I want to start doing here in London. I, I already started in two or three congresses. They gave me a workshop. We call it Dance with uh, Dance with Confidence and Live with Passion. And it's a bit of a mix, how to bring the confidence and passion from dancing into your life, everyday life. So this is something that I think not many people know about me, the public speaking in Mexico. That I want to start that now here. And the other thing they don't know linked to that is the competitions that you won for MCing in a radio station, a national in the whole country competition for MC and okay. then uh, <laughs> I got third place, yeah. third place, I got third place in the whole country and at some point in one year we were thousands, thousands all over the, 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 the country and I got third place so because I, the thing is my personality I've been always, for me it's easy to speak in front of a camera or two people or three thousand, in fact three thousand is better, it gives me so much energy <laughs> <laughs> so that's I love teaching, I love the teaching and all this. So yeah, it's, this is something that I want to, already some conferences that they know they are start asking me now to do the MC, plus the shows and everything. So it's great and I love it because it's just energy coming back and forward from the audience to me, from me to them. But as a public speaking, I will say, it's one of the things that almost nobody knows. Wow, that is definitely, that needs to go out there and people need to know. So when you go to a Congress, <laughs> you can also teach to dance and also improve uh, people's confidence and improve their life. Yeah. Um, from my side, I think quite a lot of people, or at least my students know that I'm a scientist, um, but my, my specialism has been emerging viruses, obviously very timely. So they might not know that I've um, discovered through collecting in the, forest, in the rainforest um, in Latin America, Africa and Asia, um, numerous viruses um, and characterized them and named them, um, and, and in some cases named new species of uh, insects and other things that spread them. So I've got lots of, um, quite a few, like a good number of viruses that I've discovered and named, so people might not be aware of that. Lots of um, publications on those to my name. It's uh, just very timely at the moment. So let's dive into another question, which is, um, how did you two meet? <laughs> We met in uh, Vienna, in Austria, at a Salsa Congress. We actually know that in advance of that Congress, we worked out we were on the same dance floor at an event one year prior to that. Yes. But we actually met um, at, at this Congress. So Gil was there teaching with Anka, his wonderful dance partner and best friend from Austria. I was there teaching and performing with my dance partner, Lee Wright. And we met, um, we met at the Congress backstage uh, before. So we, we were one of the three or four um, artists that were at the event teaching and performing and I think it was the first night on the Friday night before they were going to introduce all the, the teachers and performers for the weekend we met and, and we, we all became very very good friends from, from that weekend onwards they would come over and visit yeah. Um, yeah we were great friends from then we just we all got on really well didn't we yeah we were, we were like friends. she mentioned we were backstage and then uh, we started getting ready for shows and at some point, suddenly, without intention, I turned to my right and I saw Shelly and I was like, wow, <laughs> wow, yeah, it's what I said. <laughs> and, and yeah, from that moment. But we were just friends. I, I didn't say anything. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying that I said, wow, because I said, wow. So, <laughs> and yeah, but I remember that from the beginning, because that Congress, the first dance, it was on Friday. 
I just remember the amazing connection on the dancing yeah, because yeah, yeah. we love to dance fast. She loves to feel challenged when she's dancing yeah. and I love to give challenge. So it was really cool. The first dance we think like, wow, this was amazing. It was because both wanted the speed and difficulty. And so, yeah, that's the way we, that's when we met. That's how we met in Vienna. Um, as, as we all know, you, you two are married now. Yeah. Um, so it's probably a, a generic question to ask, but, um, so what is the secret of, of being married and working together? Because you two seems to have that, um, that, that right combination going on. Uh, I think we've learned that one of the aspects is, is to be aware of your, um, your strengths and work from that. So I'm, I'm very organized, probably overly so. <laughs> so um, I, tend to, <laughs> I tend to do a lot of the administration. Um, and then Gil is very creative um, and lots of energy. He's, he's amazing at choreography, for example. Um, so I think we've learned firstly to work to our strengths um, rather than both of us trying to do everything. And I think also we've been lucky in the balance that we have. So, um, you know, we've got different interests. So again, kind of me going out to work and being able to come back and talk about something different um, rather than both of us always being just yeah. focused on that one topic, I think is another part of it. Um, what else? Yeah, I think I think it, we are a normal couple that has ups and downs, so it is a completely normal situation. It is not easy for 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 couples to to work together and live together, of course. Uh, but I think for me, the main thing I will say is that from the beginning, both we we've been because I think we learned this from our parents to be extremely respectful, and that's for me. I think that's the key because. We never, ever shout to each other. We never, ever say something that we should not say. We get at the point sometimes of, right, which is a normal thing from, for humans and working together, married. But we have this, this point where we say, no more than this. Sometimes we say, let's chat later and things like this. And we learn that we shouldn't uh, bring things from, from the dancing. Sometimes some issues there, some stress that come. At the beginning, we did, and it's normal, like I said, we're a normal couple, or, or things from, from home into the, the job, the, the dancing. But then with time, of course, you learn, and we notice that it's very nice and easy not to combine that, work and home, and to respect each other and be clear about what is doing, what, what is she doing, what am I doing. Yeah, I think that's the key. We learn, like she said, the strengths of each other, and the creative boom, boom, choreographing and blah 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 and the shouting and the energy and the joking and, and she's the organizing and teaching and it's, it's a really great combination we, it couldn't be better cool. cool thank you very much for answering that so uh, looking back to the competition that you did um, a while ago which is um, you went second in the European Championship um, as we all know salsa is a well stacked really difficult um, competition to be in so how what do you remember of, of that time well, so we, we've got um, mainly, we've, we've mainly competed separately from each other. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've done European and world competitions and so has Gil. Um, I think for me it's just been a hugely exciting place of learning. Um, it, it's, it's, I think it's one of the best ways to improve your salsa in that there's such a focus on technique. You So, so from the beginning where you learn about what is it that the judges are looking for um, and why and, and how those aspects of whether it's timing, whether it's interpreting the music, whether it's how you're using your body, whether it's the, the leading and follow connection, um, you know, it, it, it opens your eyes to all of the aspects of, of a, a good, a well, a good well-rounded salsa dancer um, and it helps you to think about all, the, all of the aspects that you need to work on individually. It gives you a different prism but a different pair of glasses to look at your dancing um, and it, for me it just really opened my eyes to wow yeah I really need to work on that and that and that it just made me really hungry to, to keep learning and to keep keep getting better and at the time as well it was a, a, a very 
and I think it continues to be, a, a very friendly and supportive environment. Yeah. So even though everyone's very competitive, that's the time where I met a lot of the other international couples who were competing at the time. And everyone, it was, it was a great place to meet and make new friends in the salsa world. I'm still in contact with so many of them. Yeah. So in, in so many ways, it was, it was a really brilliant experience and kind of a, a, you know, defining moments for me, yeah. well, fantastic memories of, of the competition. Yeah. So that's probably what I take away most from it, what, what I've learned. Yeah, for me, the, the, like I said at the beginning, I'm a very competitive person. And plus I learned that when you, especially in salsa, when you learn more, you enjoy more. Because if people don't really know about technique and timing, it's difficult to enjoy. But competing, it gives you another another goal. It, to be able to compete, you need to be able to be really good at technique, at timing, connection, balance, so many things. And and for me, for example, yeah, this main competition, sort of band championship in Hamburg, that was amazing. It was really, really great experience. And then the ones in Athens were, wow, just competing next to Oliver Pineda, Fernando Sosa, Anne and Anichi, Junior and Emily, uh, Adrian and Anita, yeah. couples like this, and getting uh, third place and the fifth place in different years next to them, receiving a medal. It's just to have a, uh, Fernando Sosa next to you, it's, it's, and Adrian and Anita, and these guys in the podium receiving a, a medal. It's just the best feeling. It's the best feeling. It's, it's plus, yeah, like I said, it makes you enjoy doing the competition. I just enjoy it so much, even with the stress. I love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you said that you're sharing the stage with your friends as well, isn't it? So it's not yeah. really a, a competition where you're really uh, trying to kill each other. It's more, it's like a friendly environment too as well, I, I guess. It, it is a great environment. I remember, for example, Anne and Anichi, we are really good friends. Adrian and Anita too, uh, Fernando Sosa, we meet in many places. And I just remember that practicing backstage before everybody, before the shows, we had a really small room, a really small room, and everybody wanted to practice, you could feel, but you could see that nobody wanted to go in the center of the others just to do it in front of everyone before on backstage. I think that's more stressful than being on a stage, because you are next to the others that are going to do exactly the same, so at some point somebody says, guys, we want to practice, come on, let's do it one at a time. And around everybody of the others that are going to compete on the final, the ten best, the, the, the ten best couples, just looking at you like, and you're doing it in front of them, and then the other, the next, the next. It's it's an, it's amazing because you can feel the friendship, but at the same time, of course, you can feel that. Well, I hope you lose your hand now. Oh, I hope you do the wrong step now. Oh, there's something there, which is normal, but but it's it's amazing. It's it's great feeling. Yeah. I also like the discipline of having a goal to work towards. Yeah. So I enjoy the, the, the motivation that, that that provides. Yeah. I mean, it, it, is, it is a, uh, a couple of dance. Uh, uh, teamwork is also part of the, the process, I guess. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you can see, I think you can see in the final product. More for Shelley. Yeah. Um, so nowadays with the current situation, lady styling us at the forefront of, of, uh, of classes pretty much. But um, what is lady styling for you? Um, what, what is... Uh, what does it mean for you? For me, ladies' styling is more about providing a technical toolkit for followers to enjoy and improve both their following in partner work and um, footwork, and together just to bring to bring them a sense of confidence and make the dance their dance their own. I think so. A lot of my ladies' styling classes, it's not about teaching a routine and where you put your arm out and when and doing a shoulder roll here and there. It's it's about how the body fits together. I think there's a, as you mentioned, a bit of my scientific background probably comes through um, because I use aspects of anatomy and, and physiology and how the body works. Um, so everything about whether we're talking about the basic step and how you use your feet and weight transfer and where your where your um, intention should be and how it flows through the back and, and that flows through to the arm work and the momentum is um, applicable to partner work and shines and everything in between. And the aim is to give the ladies the tools that they need to dance with confidence, with speed, with balance, so that they enjoy salsa more whether whether they've got a partner or or not. Um, so when 
did you start the Pixava company? Because um, it's a well-known brand in, in, in London and uh, you guys are famous as well for your performance group. So um, could you take us back? When did the idea start and, um, um, and who, who came up together with the name and, and things like that? Because I'll tell you what, I tried to Google it to translate it, but there's no translation for the word. So if you yeah. can tell us a background story to, to the name as well. With pleasure. So we, uh, we officially incorporated the company in 2012. So that, that's, that's how old Pexava is now. Yes. Um, I checked that just the, today because I couldn't uh -huh. remember the exact timing. The, the name of the company, it's actually a, a Mayan word. I will um, let him tell you what it means. Yeah, we, when we started thinking about which name to use for the company, we, we thought we need something that it goes with speed, with difficulty, with power, with energy, mainly speed because we love to dance fast. We've been recognized for that, and, and so then uh, I think when we were in Mexico, I think Shelley said it would be good to have like a Mexican word. We love our favorite place for holiday every year is Cancun. We go every year in December when everybody's here having cold time. We go there, <laughs> and when we were there in Mexico in Cancun in that area, you still see lots of Mayans. Lots of Mayans. They work in the hotels. So, and of course, because they know what, they are very friendly with us, we start chatting one day, and then we said, you know what, let's write down some words that we would love to, to be the, the, the name of the company somehow, and let's see if we can find it in Mayan, and which one sounds cool. So we start writing down tornado, vol volcano, uh, speed, uh, fast, blah, 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 and then uh, at some point, we found this word, lightning fast. And we ask it to one of the wait, 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 waiters, yeah? yeah, to say, hey, my friend, can you help us with this? We are trying to find uh, uh, the translation in Mayan of these words. And they start telling us some of them were not easy to say or we are not power with the power, enough power for the, what we wanted to, to give. So then when we asked for this one, how do you say lightning fast? This guy said, it's not even Pexaba, it should be Peshaba. Peshava, because in, in Mayan, the X is not X, it's Pesh, so Peshava. So then when he said Peshava, 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 yeah, it's something that's lightning fast, and we said, okay, Zero, but Peshava could be, yeah, sounds Peshava has power, that, that, that word, and we said, why not? So it was a great combination. It means the lightning fast, something that we, we are very used to dance fast, and it reflects Gil's heritage. Yeah, so it was, anyway. and it's something, something very special, I think, from Mayan culture. So that's how we came with the name. Wow. I even <laughs> Googled that and I couldn't find the answer. So thank you for explaining it to us. Um, you guys are really famous for your, um, for the high level of classes and your performance groups. Um, it's always kind of a question for, for general public. How do I start to join your performance groups? And what levels of performance group do you guys uh, offer? Um, so, so we thank you. We, uh, we currently offer um, two officially, <laughs> but there's a third one which is kind of maybe a performance group on the way with your with your Tuesdays. Yeah. Um, so we we have our semi pro team Alma de Pixava, which um, many people may have seen at congresses, etc. Uh, which we, we're very lucky to have been working with a lot of those team members for, for years. I think that we've been very lucky to have them with us for five or six years in some cases. They're great friends of ours as well as learning uh, salsa with us. And for that team, it's an on-to a, a, a semi-pro level um, training course. So we, we are, we're always looking to hear from people that are committed and that are advanced on-to dancers that would would like to try training at that level that are you know, that are looking for look, that would enjoy the team environment, the commitment, the fun, and then we also have um, the Carol Flores um, UK team, which I'm very privileged to to run, and again um, that um, that's also a place of friendship in addition to to training, and that's open to lady. Well, actually. 
not ladies, to, to anyone um, that wants to, that, that's a, an intermediate to advanced on to dancer. Um, but then, you know, the, the, the way that most people come to us for our teams is through our more regular classes. I'd say that quite a few of our existing team members have been with us from, even from beginner level. Um, we, would, we would hope that people feel able to come up and yeah. talk to us and we're always happy to, to do an informal assessment and to say where we think they might be and what we think they might benefit from working on. But I'd say probably many of them come to us because they've been to our regular classes yeah. in a more informal environment and then they, you know, they're, they're interested in, in training harder. Yeah. Most of the people come from our lessons and, and some other people sometimes they come for an assessment and then we, we let them know if they're with the right level or not or what to do to get into that level. Uh, my Tuesday lesson is, is something that, for example, now I'm going to, in, in, in April, I'm going to do this course online that is going to be four weeks and I'm going to try to pay together not just food work, it's going to be food work as a choreography. So you're going, they're going to learn one minute, 30 seconds of a choreography doing footwork, and they're going to learn footwork that they can do in the normal dance for, with any song, with timing, and then something with the music, because it's very nice to dance sometimes just with the music. Okay, from the first, first ever group we had, always we create something that people say when they come to this group, is, or any other student groups, is they say, guys, this is really like a family. In fact, to say, uh, familia pexaba, family of Alma. pexaba. Yeah, so. this is Alma, or, or, yeah. or sometimes we say familia of pexaba. It's because people came with that name for us. Some people told us, guys, why don't you make something that says familia pexaba, because it's what they feel like, a family, and it's, and it's what it is. We, we talk to our groups. Uh, once a week, we had chats here and now in this time, and, and, and it's, it's just amazing. We plan sometimes holidays, traveling. It's, it's just very nice. It's not just a student teacher. It builds up a really great friendship. I think the other point about the groups is uh, performance isn't compulsory, and I think this is something that a lot of people might not know. Yeah. That's um, certainly the case with Carol Flores, also with, with our semi-pro team. Um, so I think pe sometimes that you know, something that people might feel more comfortable with. And the other thing is, we try to put an emphasis on the fact that the choreographies and the performances are a tool for your learning. So sometimes I think people, you know, they say, well, I, I don't want to perform, and that it might not give them the skills for social dancing. That's something that I strongly disagree with, because when we're teaching um, one of our semi-pro teams an aspect of, of spinning for part of the choreography, that's 100% translatable to your social dancing. When I'm teaching um, uh, the, the ladies about aspects of their basic step, how to be balanced, how to make this move look graceful, um, and, and we're interpreting the music, albeit with a set choreography, but we're learning to interpret the music with our bodies, again, um, I think that those are all fully transferable skills. So I think um, you know, it, it's not just about performance. No, it's, 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 it's more than that. It is definitely yeah. about learning to dance, uh, to, to, to bring to you to the dance floor. Because when we, I can say that 90% to 95% of a choreography that we teach is something that you can lead and follow. Of course, not on that speed with someone on the dance floor because it's really fast. It's what we add the speed, what we like. But... The, the fact that we do leading and following things and forward that you can use at any point, that's, that's the main thing for us. We don't want people just to learn a choreography and then they don't know how to do what to do on the dance floor. They can do that on the dance floor with a slow track with someone else too. And 5% and, and or 10% is not leading and following because sometimes we want to do it specifically with that track. Or that's a trick, which you wouldn't do on the social dance floor. Or, or we want to use the music on that track, specifically trumpets, piano, something. That is not going to be in every track, and then we use it in that moment for the show. But most of the time is that leading and following, learning leading and following technique, movement, uh, everything that you can translate into the dance, you can put on the dance floor. And Gil makes a good point about leading and following techniques. So this is something that regular students will hear a lot from me. But um, you know, following technique is equal in magnitude and challenge to leading technique. And I think that's one of the things I, I really have the luxury of, of spending time on that with people in, in, in all our classes, um, is that you know, what, what we would teach in a choreography, for me as a follower, how to follow this particular move, again, is 100% transferable. And you, know, you should be hearing equally 
leading and following technique in every in every class. Uh, everything that you teach is is actually becomes an extension of a, of a person in terms of their personality and, and dancing. It's um, it's remarkable to understand it in in that aspect. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And something it's fun. And it's something fun. that I, something that I love to hear from the students because I really love the feeling when when they come to us and tell us uh, after congresses, for example, mainly congresses, which is people that we don't see regularly, they come and say, "Guys, thank you so much because we receive teaching for guys and girls, same amount, and that is very important." I see many, many, many people just the guy talking, 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 talking. The girl doesn't say anything and. And the girls are just there to follow the move, and sometimes one, two things, that's it. But, but with Shelly, we share that because we receive, we deserve the same information, the same teaching, because it's 50 and 50. When you dance, you need a good follower, you need a good leader. So it's great to hear from the students saying always, it was great that you guys teach half and half. That's, that's amazing. We, you can see the faces of the girls saying, thank you, guys. <laughs> it's, it's great, yeah. It's great, but, you know, there's the flip side of it where, yeah, yeah, ladies, just make sure that you're demanding the same in your classes yes. if you're not feeling that you're getting, you know, the balance right. It sounds like you have a lot of experience and um, a knowledge to pass on. Would you be open to um, mentoring people, for example, if they if they want to be in in the phase of competition? Yes, I think we'd certainly be open to it, and and we have, in fact, done that for for some of our. We won't say the names, but we've certainly helped a number of our UK competitors informally, um, done sessions with them, providing feedback on their routines and, and points to improve on. So um, totally open to it and, and have done it already, in fact. Yeah, it's, it's something that yeah we would love to. If someone comes to us and say, I would like to prepare for a competition, we would love to train them. Why not? Because it's, it's, it's great. It's, the opportunity to support the UK we, scene. We love to share knowledge. We love yeah. to share knowledge. We, we Many times when the lesson finish, again, people come and say, oh my God, the details you said about the hand twisting when you do this, about the moving, the intention, about the... It, it's so important. That makes difference. Yes, we, we love to share these thing, kind of things. And like, like Shelley mentioned, we're not going to say any names, but... But we've been helping. I've been helping in Shelley to uh, some couples that have been competing, and they come to ask us, "What do you think? Can you give me some feedback? Can you tell me this?" And then we spend one two sessions uh, cleaning or saying details that I know that judges in competitions are going to be checking. Wow, that's that's really good to know that you guys are open to do that, and also it's because you know it's it's representing the UK, and and I guess it's yep. all part of that group. Um, and we need to be showing the best of, of, of the UK talent. I looked at your website and it seems that there is a demand for the, uh, for the DVDs. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm just kind of thinking moving forward, are you guys looking into maybe having an online dance platform that people can subscribe to and um, they can learn through that when they can't attend your regular classes? Yeah, so I guess there's two parts to that, absolutely. So we have our DVDs, which are um, currently out of stock. We need to try and work out how to solve that problem. Then we've got, I wouldn't call it a, an online platform, but we've um, it's not that developed. But we've moved, for example, Gil's Tuesday classes are now online, um, and we're running those through both Zoom and Facebook so that we get maximum interaction with the students and the, the, the opportunity Still to Still in a studio with heroes, yeah. Um, yes, and then the, our Carol Flores team, luckily, were already used to working online a little bit because we have team members, incredibly privileged to have team members that are based, for example, we have two gorgeous ladies who are um, very talented who dial in from Switzerland and fly across for some of the classes and for lessons. So I think we, we've been thinking about yeah. that for honestly for many years. But because again we've been busy, Shelley's been very busy with her job, uh, which she's doing amazingly. And and we are already busy with the things we have in salsa. We haven't uh, spent the time or energy to say, okay, let's do it now. But of course it's 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 on the it's on our radar yes. and, and maybe yeah. maybe Arguably now is probably perhaps the time to think yeah, more carefully yeah, about it. If anyone would like to help us, we'd be <laughs> <laughs> interested interested to hear from them. Definitely. Um, I will ask questions in regards to that and maybe forward you some information. Thank you. Uh, of people currently doing it. Um, 
I know for some people when they're taking classes, they like to have something physical to kind of hold on to to say that, oh, I've reached this level of 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 my dancing. So are you guys um also uh, looking into um, issuing certification, for example, for for your for your group? Salsa comes from the street, and then evolved in different styles, different countries. Uh, people that I see doing certifications, these certifications go mainly with their style. It doesn't mean that really salsa has a certification like other type of dances. Uh, so for us, it's, uh, at this point, we are not seeing that goal because we don't see how to, to do a certification that's something that comes from the street when everybody has certifications with their own style. So I don't, I don't see how this could happen in salsa soon. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see how. how we, yeah. we can, plus, the other thing is, uh, we can teach someone maybe to 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 teach, but sometimes, for example, people has been asking, oh, could could we have like a Pexaba uh, franchise. franchise somewhere? Mm -hmm. And one of the main things of Pexaba, people tell us always, is the energy and the atmosphere and the detail on technique that we provide to our students being there with them. So, and, and, it's, and that's a risky point for us because it's difficult to see that someone is going to deliver exactly the same product on, any, on every aspect. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why we have said still no to, to many people that have been asking. At the same time, we have one or two people that sometimes they ask us uh, uh, when we go to congresses and we say, guys, if you want to go to lessons here, for example, in Scotland, Ireland, I don't know, uh, these guys teaching here, he lives here and he came to train with us to, to, to UK, to London, and, and they know everything about our technique and this, but it's not a franchise. We're just saying that they learn from us, that they can teach quite the same things. But no, it's, it's difficult, this point about certification. It's a very, very difficult point in Salsa. Like you said, the, uh, the teacher training um, is actually quite fundamental because you want to be able to offer somewhat the, the same syllabus because nowadays um, in, in for example in bachata um, they they actually do that so that um, the teaching is is kind of this this a syllabus for the teaching yeah so so it's more structured and things doesn't get missed out and, and, and things like that yeah I can see the value in that yeah we'll move on to the next question which is a bit more fun and relaxed <laughs> so uh, we're gonna talk about the um, you're, uh, uh, you've done quite a few TV appearances and, and, and uh, movies as well. Um, could you name a few of the memorable ones that you, on the top of your head, that, that, was, that you had a great experience working with and, and um, that, that was memorable for you? Uh, from my side, back to kind of the earlier days, I had great fun doing a, a video for um, a group called Roll Deep. If, if you search on the internet, you'll see lots of salsa faces in that. That was really good fun. I remember performing um, at the Excel Center on the KISS FM Urban Music Awards. That was really fun and, and I enjoyed that very much. Uh, also, what's been very special for me was performing on Strictly, Strictly Come Dancing, with Richard Marcel, Susanna Montero and, and other people from the salsa scene. That was um, a great experience as well. And then together, the, the Got to Dance was really good. Yeah, the Got to Dance it was an amazing experience, yeah. Uh, we, we were lucky, we got three gold stars on that. We did have a, the judges visit to our place, which was interesting. TV cameras in, in a small flat and trying to um, move people around. We actually, we put all of our bits and pieces into one spare room to make room. And then we didn't realize that we would then be put in that spare room with the judge to, to, for an aspect of the filming. So that was super awkward. <laughs> yes, we, we, put, we put all the, all the you know, things that you have all over the place in the living room. We said, let's put it in this room here that they don't see it. And then when they were inside the house, they said, OK, guys, now at this point, we want you to stay here. And uh, we're going to, what's her name? Uh, oh, the girl that, uh, one, one of the, of the judges, judges yeah. uh, they said, we're going to ask her to be inside this room, and then she comes out from that door, okay? <laughs> and we're like, <laughs> okay. So yeah, it wasn't really funny. That was funny. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, um, 
Matilda the Musical, so choreographing oh, yeah. that was brilliant. It was really interesting to be teaching salsa moves to trained dancers who haven't done salsa before. Lisa recommended this um, earlier, yeah? Yes, yeah, that was great, Lisa, Lisa Wellen. Um, so that was interesting to, to see how other dance techniques can, can um, yeah. mix. Um, and then, of course, Cuban Fury, which was just... Oh, Cuban Fury was too good, too was, good. Because to see, for, for me, one experience that I had to it was in Austria. When I was in Austria, I did the, the Strictly Come Dance with, with some of, of the famous people in Graz, in the city. And, and I was dancing with one of, one of the main presenters of TV in that time. And, and it was a really great experience, too. So, but the, the Cuban Fury, yeah, it was, it was great because it was so much fun. Plus, it was seen every, for, five, for one week, one, week, one full yeah. week. From seven o'clock in the morning until midnight, being with your salsa friends and performance and salsa students scene was and there. It it was everybody brilliant. there, it was just great to be laughing, joking. Even sometimes they, when they caught the filming, they were playing music for us and we were dancing. It was it was a, a full week of party with salsa people. It was plus the fact of seeing real salsa showing on the screen, on the big screen, that was the best because, you know, sometimes we've been called to some programs and, and TV shows that they said, okay, you guys, we had some experiences that we, I'm going to be honest, we didn't enjoy because they said to us, you guys come and do some of your show here, to one minute, two minutes, whoa, cool, go. Then we get there and then they say, hey, guys, I want you to do these moves and this and this and we're like, wait, wait, wait. You told us to dance. No, no, we want you. Yeah, but that is not what we do. It's, it's, it's not the same. We're, we cannot show that because we are not that. And then sometimes we have one experience. I'm not going to say the program, but they told us, come and do your show. One minute. Great. Okay. We get there. And they say, ready, guys? Yeah, ready. Of course. We send the music, everything. We got their costume. And then they put us behind one little... A wall, so, the, so a, we were dancing wall. through a window, so you saw less of us you than saw, you You saw now. this, for most, only. <laughs> oh, no. And they, we were there, and we thought, this is going to be the presentation, then we go into the stage. <laughs> and they were like, okay, guys, here you're going to dance, and cables on the floor, and what? How? Yeah, here is the dancing. Yeah, but we cannot dance here. Just do something here. Okay, and the music? No music. So it was uh, <laughs> not easy. That's why. That's why I said uh, uh, we we love it the Q and Pure thing because it was music, real salsa tracks, uh, real salsa dancers, plus energy of, of of all the actors. It was amazing when they see us dancing. They were clapping and and learning. It was, for example, really good fun. Sometimes people doing like a lineup during the breaks. With the, with the people from the cameras and the producer and the artists doing the, the food work and learning, it was just the best. It was. It was very great. Was it? Richard Marcel and Susanna Montero yeah, really yeah. did a, a great job there for, for bringing authentic dancers from the salsa scene yeah, yeah. Um, into that. They boat. told us yeah. from the beginning, we want to show what real yeah. salsa is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was so much fun, so much fun. And, and, and Go To Dance it was great because to be, to be able to be competing next to professional dancers from different styles, styles. Yeah. it's just so cool and stress because you see them doing the things that you're like i would never do that oh my god that's great but of course at the same time when they see us sometimes practicing spinning room doing the flicks the arms the blah 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 the movement they came to us like wow that's so cool so it was a really really great experience and to see one of the judges at the end i remember Ashley. standing up yeah. yeah Ashley, standing up and wow I never saw this kind of partner working crazy fast. As the, wow. So it's, it's really, it was a great experience. Yeah. Yeah, we've been very lucky. Yeah. Cool. It's, uh, it sounds like you, you guys are professional and able to handle different facet of, of uh, TV and, and, uh, and movies. You could well. say that. Yeah, with the, with, the, with the Matilda, with the Matilda musical, they asked us, they saw one part of one of our choreographies, and then they asked, can you guys teach us this, teach us this part of your choreography in this six bars of music and we were like oh, uh, guys what you see there is eight bars and it's extremely fast it's gonna be impossible to put it on six. Oh, we can do it oh, okay so we did it extra fast and we put it there for them we did it but when they tried they were like it looks easy yeah but it's not that because it's a different thing professional dancers than than, than dance, dance salsa dancers 
But at the same time, it was great to see how we at the end we work together, we work together so nicely, and they yeah. appreciate what we do, and we appreciate what, what they, they do. do. Yeah. And it was it was another great experience. Yeah. Really, the rest. <clears throat> okay, so now we have um, so now we have a, a section for uh, viewers' questions. Um, so could you just give us a quick tip for beginners? Okay, I will give. I always ask people, what do you think is the most, imp in my opinion, the most important thing about dancing, to be a good salsa dancer? People say movement, connection, passion, blah, blah, blah. One thing, two things I will say is timing and stepping. If you have timing, you can dance. I always say, if you don't have timing, you are just pulling and pushing someone on the dance floor. You need to dance with the music you can hear, you, with the song you are listening to. So timing and stepping the whole Good time great without yeah. stopping. Pa, 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 pa. That is my main advice. Keep stepping on every beat and one, two, three, five, six, seven, and uh, timing. That's the best, the, the one I could give. Um, so do you have any piercings or tattoos? Well, I can see some right now. No. <laughs> yes, I have this one. Yeah. And that is from? It's a Samoan, Samoan. and Maori, Maori style. And it's, it's, I love it, the design when I saw it. And I just decided to put it there. Then I found out about the, the meaning of the, of the symbols. My mom told me really funny when she saw it, she didn't like it. And she said, what are you doing? And then she said, Ali, do you know the meaning? And I was at the beginning, no. And she was like, oh my God, imagine if, you, if it says that I'm a fool and you're doing that. You're so, but then I, I, I learned about this. I, I was reading about that. And now it has some, some this, this triangles means equilibrium in life. Uh, this means wisdom this chain here in the Samoan and Maori style. This means respect for life. And this means strength. So when I learn about this, I love it. He was pretty lucky. I there. was pretty lucky. Imagine, imagine if I read something that says, I'm a really bad dancer, have no timing, and I'm a loser. So that, <laughs> no. that, that would be... <laughs> yeah, it's the only that I have, and it's the only one I think I'm going to have. I love it. My piercings are just here. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Could you name an artist that you enjoy watching and performing? There are many. Oh, there are so many. And I have to say, actually, my inspiration doesn't only come from artists. I think you can learn so much and get so much inspiration from anyone on a social dance floor. Someone that's enjoying the dance or, or the connection between two partners, that also is inspiring for me. I guess I, I should definitely mention um, kind of one of my key mentors in Salsa in terms of technique and styling for me it is carol flores i'm very lucky to to work with her on our um, kf uk team um and, and have learned a lot in in recent years from yeah. her i think that would be one for me for me it's really difficult to say to, to mention one but i'm going to mention the ones that i learned from and because because it's part of me being that technical and thinking about the right things to do on the dance floor and is of course adolfo in the amazing amazing on everything a uh, different style and the most maybe the most professional i've seen in salsa fernando sosa from tropical gem which i learned from them six months i i went to italy to stay in italy taking lessons with them and and it's, it was just amazing and the other one is uh ah, of course of course yeah. osmar yeah. perrones yeah. We, that's, we love the speed of the spinning, the dancing, the difficulty, the tricks. And the last one, and I think everybody loves, is Eddie Torres, which is still, uh, he brings passion. passion energy, love. It's just the love. best. So these are the names I can say. It would be unfair to say just one, but these ones yeah. are... Yeah, and yeah. I think, Yamule, that's a good point. We're very lucky that, I think we're the only group we're in the only Europe group. Yeah. that can um, teach their routine. So um, we've we've done quite a few now choreographies of, of Yamale semi-protein with our semi-protein. And again, that's been a great place of, of just for, for learning and, yeah. and new technique. Yamule has, in New, York, so. Yamule has in New York a semi-professional team, which is where they take the people to the pro team at some point. But they, they dance almost at the same speed 
and he, sometimes he sends us the choreographies of his group and we put it to our Alma de Pexaba semi-pro and they dance same speed, same level and it's amazing. It's these, these people, they keep inspiring, inspiring us every time we see them. Yeah, and there's something different as well about seeing someone perform and doing their routines. And I think that's the same for both Cara Flores and yeah. Yamile. You, 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 you know, to feel it as well as to watch it for me is another, uh, uh, an additional level of enjoyment. I mean, it's like experiencing it and actually feeling it. It's it's a different it's a different yeah. from just watching it. Uh, you yeah. have more appreciation to to that piece of work, if if you know what I mean. What message do you have for your students all across the world and also to the Pixabo family? My message will be: as long as you can move, don't stop dancing, because it is the best feeling ever. I can say, if I have to choose of the many sports I did in my life too, one of them for sure will be dancing salsa. It creates connection with people amazingly. Uh, I will say that keep dancing, keep enjoying, learn the right thing to do because when you learn the right thing to do, you enjoy more the dancing. Sometimes people say, I don't want all that technique and teach, yeah, I just want to have fun. And I said, you won't have the same fun. You will have more fun if you learn properly. So I will say, as long as you keep moving, keep dancing. That's my advice, because it makes you happy. It will make you happy always. It doesn't matter how old you are. Uh, I think for me, in the current moment, so while we, we can't dance together, I think it's firstly to bear in mind, yet yeah, this won't be forever. We will all be back on a dance floor in the future um, together again. Um, so, so keep practicing keep practicing all, all your basics and aspects of technique because then they will really um, come to the fore and, and once yeah. we're all dancing together again that will be um, really valuable. I think the other thing is just thank you. I've um, just been so lucky to have this second career of Salsa for nearly 20 yeah, years yeah. now and it just brings you into contact with such a diverse range of people that I wouldn't meet in my, you know, normally during, in the, during the day job, for example, um, and you know, it's brought so much friendship and connection and support, um, and, you know, we just want to work hard to maintain that connection, what, you know, whatever happens in the future. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big thank you. Very grateful. Um, so where can the, everybody find you on a regular basis once everything's normal? Once everything's back to normal, we have regular classes in West London on Tuesdays. We have our semi-pro team, which also trains in West London on Wednesdays. We have the Carol Flores team, which normally trains at weekends in central London. We have our Pix Other Socials on Thursdays and some Saturdays. The information is always on the Pix Other website, so www pexava.com we also keep our pexava dance and our pexava socials uh, facebook groups up to date uh, pages sorry we're on instagram uh, the best way to contact us is generally by email so that's info at pexava.com or shelly at pexava.com or there's also a contact telephone number on our website and then in the meantime, until we're back to normal, we are offering online classes with Gil. I'm also joining when I can. Um, that we've got um, adverts on Facebook about that. You can contact him through his Facebook profile. Or again, you can email to receive information about that. At the moment, that's mainly running on Tuesday evenings, but the videos are saved. Um, so if you can't make the Tuesday evening live, you can participate in the whole session at, at a later date and uh, we also do it through zoom so we can give you feedback at the yeah. time we'll be running some other things other than just that i'll probably do a couple of lady styling workshops as well so we'll we'll be um available you can contact me too by uh, texting me a, a message because uh, my telephone number is on the website too please don't forget to subscribe guys like comment and share the video thank you